The U.S. Civil War from 1861 to 1865 produced a goldmine of records for genealogy research. In the records I'm sharing today, you will find not just military information, but also family relationships, the physical appearance of your ancestors, such as eye color, hair color, and height, but also fellow soldiers, which were a huge network of support and employment for people post-war. Now let's get to my list of 25 resources for Civil War research. databases and books. This section covers things that you can easily access online, some of which are derivative records, meaning records created from the original records on the Civil War, and some things I list here are actually original records that are online and have been digitized either from a microfilm copy or from the original paper. Uh, in the next section, I cover must-have records in part two, and in part three, I cover unique sources of Civil War records. Check out all three parts of this video to have a complete picture of your Civil War ancestor. Now back to part one, uh, county biographies. County biographies are something every genealogist uses. They were published around the time of the U.S. Centennial in 1876, up to about 1890 to 1910, and these histories are written of the people in the county where they lived. It, most of these you'll find rosters of men who enlisted or were drafted into the Civil War, and the Family Search Wiki is a great starting point to locate copies of these books online. Number two, Samuel Bates's five volume history of the Pennsylvania Volunteers, 1861 to 1865. These books are considered the definitive listing of soldiers and their regimental histories. You can get these on Google Books for free and also on Ancestry. Number three, Civil War Soldiers and Sailors Database. This database created by the National Park Service around the 150th anniversary of the Civil War uh, battles uh, is a compiled database of all soldiers and sailors from both sides of the conflict. You'll find information, again, on the soldiers, the regiments, the battles they participated in, and the awards they received. Find it on the National Park Service website. Number four, Fold3. Fold3.com is the home for military records in the United States and also abroad, and it is run by Ancestry.com. When you're on the home page for Fold3, you can choose U.S. Civil War or Union or Confederacy as a st starting point to start researching your Civil War ancestor. Number five, the Nationwide Gravesite Locator by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs in Washington, D.C. does a lot of things for U.S. veterans of all wars, but the one thing that you want to note for sure as a genealogist is the online database of gravesites. They cover every veteran from every American conflict or war, and no matter where they're buried around the world. This includes our Civil War veterans. You can also order new gravestones for your Civil War veteran or a medallion noting their service to add to an existing headstone on this website. Go to va.gov to start. Number six, list of pensioners on the roll January 1st, 1883, the book series. These books published in 1882 list all the Civil War pensioners by state, including their widows, and give the address by post office as well as the pension amount received and the date of original claim. You can find these books on Google Books or also on Ancestry. Number seven, the 1890 U.S. Census Special Schedule. While the 1890 uh, population census was destroyed in a fire, the special schedules were not. And this one listing all the veterans and widows of Union soldiers is one you will want to check out. You will find a copy of this on Ancestry, and you'll find details on here of soldiers, sailors, and Marines, as well as the widows, uh, listed along with the service dates, uh, disabilities incurred, and postal addresses. Number eight, Pennsylvania Volunteers in the Civil War website. The way I think of this website is I think of it as a homepage for researching your Pennsylvania ancestors who served in the Civil War. Unfortunately, many of the links are broken on this website, but you'll still learn a lot from what is left. 
It's on pacivilwar.com. Number nine, the Camp William Penn website. Over 10,000 black men trained at Pennsylvania's largest military camp, Camp William Penn. While the actual physical site no longer remains, the website does host databases and archives on the U United States Colored Troops. You'll find it at usct.org. Do you have an online website about the Civil War that you particularly love that's been great to help your research? Perhaps it's someone's personal blog, or perhaps it's something about your soldier's unit. Please drop it in the comments below. We would love to see it. I know I'd love to see it, and it'll help all of us increase our knowledge about our ancestors' Civil War service. Part two of must-use records for Civil War research include records that are original records, records that are online but also in, still in their original format that you are going to want to have for your Civil War ancestors. Number 10, Civil War Pensions Index. These are index cards which organize the 3 million pension files at the National Archives. On them, you'll find your soldier's unit of service and their pension file number, which is necessary for obtaining the file itself. You'll find these on Fold 3. Number 11, Union Army Pension Files. No record does more to tell the experience of your ancestor soldier than this one set of records. You must get a copy of this file from the National Archives if you have not already. Very few of these have been microfilmed and imaged onto Fold 3, but you might find some there for your soldier. Number 12, Compiled Military Service Records, or CMSRs. These were cards created for Civil War only that contain the master list of service for each Union soldier. They were created in 1890 and are considered these days to be a very accurate listing of the service for each individual. The cards themselves are imaged in their entirety on Fold 3. Number 13, the deserters list curated by Penn State University. Not every drafted man served in the Union Army. Nearly 30,000 failed to report or deserted their post between 1861 and 1865. Penn State University imaged and indexed these records that you can search for free on the Penn State Library's website. Number 14, conscientious objector affidavits. There was a considerable objection to military and service in Pennsylvania due to the religious following of many of the residents. The Genealogical Society of Pennsylvania hosts a transcribed list from federal records of conscientious objectors, but the Pennsylvania State Archives holds additional names and original signed affidavits from 1862. You'll want to research both sets of records. Number 15, historical markers. It can seem strange to mention physical locations as being a necessary record as a part of genealogical research. But if you've been doing genealogy for a while, you know that knowing the location and literally walking in the steps of your ancestors can really bring your genealogy to life and give you a deeper understanding of the exact records that you're looking at. The Pennsylvania Historical Marker Database is on the PHMC website. You can choose Civil War as a category to see the 124 markers related to Union troops, Confederate prisoners of war, and military and civilian events. The Historical Markers Database, hmdb.org, hosts markers from all over the United States. Again, give Civil War as a topic to narrow your search and then search the exact state, such as Pennsylvania, that you want to look at. The Civil War Trails Project at civilwartrails.org is special signs and maps for over 1,500 sites across six states. They have excellent PDF map books about the history of the Civil War and, and wonderful signage noting both the invasion and retreat of different forces at different points during the war. Number 16, Gettysburg National Park. You can't talk about the Civil War in Pennsylvania without talking about Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg in July 1863 is known as the turning point of the Civil War, and Abraham Lincoln later gave his famous address at this site. And check the calendar on the MPS Gettysburg website for events held spring, summer, and fall, and talk about all the events leading up to the, the battle itself and post-battle. Part three, unique archival records. 
If you've ever watched anything I've ever produced, you know I love archives and the original records which they hold. In this section of the video, I'm going to explain unique records that you can find on your Civil War ancestors that you might want to pursue because you've gotten everything else on that ancestor uh, related to the Civil War, or you just might be particularly stumped or curious uh, in terms of your research. So number 17, the 1862 records of drafted men and substitutes. Each Union state conducted their own draft of men aged 21 and over in 1862, and Pennsylvania's records on this draft are at the Pennsylvania State Archive. If a man paid for a substitute to serve in his place after this draft, it is also listed here. Number 18, the 1863 draft registration records. The federal government conducted their own draft again in 1863 because the 1862 draft was not enough to fulfill Union Army ranks. These uh, records were recently digitized in full color and the large books are hosted on Ancestry. These records are huge. It's a huge, huge set of records. In it you'll find all eligible men and whether they were enrolled in Union or Confederate forces, uh, there were a significant number of Pennsylvania men who moved south to fight for the Confederacy. Number 19, Provost Marshal Records. The Provost Marshal was the federal office focused on tracking down draft deserters, keeping a log of substitutes for draft, and noting anyone not physically fit for service. If you have an ancestor in one of these categories, these records, which are still in their original and very fragile condition, may be worth a look. For Pennsylvania records, you're gonna find those at the National Archives Philadelphia branch, uh, in record group 110. Number 20, the Union League of Philadelphia. The Union League was founded as a patriotic society in 1862 to support the war effort. Today the Union League is a private club, but within its walls is a library and archive documenting both the naval and land battles of the Civil War. You can find more at unionleague.org. Interestingly, the Confederacy also had a patriotic society also on Broad Street, on North Broad Street, the Union League is on South Broad Street in Philadelphia. There are no remaining records that I know of of the Confederacy's uh, League in Philadelphia on Broad Street, and if you hear of them, please let me know, drop something in the comments. I, that would be an interesting record set to find out who in Philadelphia was supporting the Confederacy during the war. Number 21, the Grand Army of the Republic Museum and Archives. Located in Philadelphia, the GAR Museum and Archives curates artifacts and papers related to the Civil War. The GAR, the Grand Army of the Republic, was a organization that veteran soldiers could join uh, to both relive their war service and provide uh, company and companionship to each other. Records of the groups are at garmuslib.org. Number 22, the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum in Pittsburgh. Located on, on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, the Soldiers and Sailors Hall is a tribute to the Allegheny County veterans from the Civil War to the present day. There's a wonderful collection of artifacts from Gettysburg and civil life of the 1860s which fill up two halls inside. They also have an extensive paper archive with scrapbooks, letters, and photos of soldiers. Go to soldiersandsailorshall.org to learn more. 23, Gettysburg National Park Library and Research Center. Gettysburg is more than just the physical park and land. They also have a archive and research center and a library of books available for in-depth research. This archive holds manuscripts, letters, and photographs relating to the Battle of Gettysburg and the people who participated in it, and also the development of Gettysburg Park itself. Please note that this, part, this archive is only open by appointment, and it's for serious research only, not general genealogical inquiries. Number 24, the National Civil War Museum. Over 850 artifacts of the war fill the exhibits of this Smithsonian-affiliated museum in Harrisburg. It's a great way to picture the life of your ancestor soldier through their uniforms, weapons, and living conditions, and perhaps pieces of your ancestor's life are stored here. You'll find it at nationalcivilwarmuseum.org. Number 25, property damage claims. 
This is the final item I'm mentioning because no war goes without damage and after effects. So if you had Pennsylvania residents in the southern central counties of Pennsylvania, you'll want to check out this collection of claims people filed with the state government about damage to their property from both Union and Confederate troops. You'll find the database on Ancestry.com. That was my list of the top 25 resources to research your Civil War ancestors, particularly if they lived in Pennsylvania. My name's Denise Allen. I'm with PAAncestors.com. And remember, if you love this resource and you want it in print, just go to PAAncestors.com and type in Civil War in the search box. Here's to you discovering more about your Pennsylvania ancestors, and I'll see you in the next episode.